In this video, I'm going to go over subject-verb agreement. In the workplace, you want to present a professional image. Your outfit or suit says something about you when you're meeting face-to-face, -face, and your writing represents you in your absence. Grammatical mistakes in your writing or even in speaking makes a negative impression on coworkers, clients, and potential employers. Subject-verb agreement is one of the most common errors that people make. Having a solid understanding of this concept is critical when making a good impression, and it will ensure that your ideas are communicated clearly. What is agreement? Agreement in speech and in writing refers to the proper grammatical match between words and phrases. Parts of sentences must agree or correspond with other parts in number, person, case, and gender. Number. All parts must match in singular or plural forms. All parts must match in first person, second person, or third person forms. Case. All parts must match in subjective. I, you, he, she, it, they, we. Objective. Me, her, him, them, us or possessive, my, mine, your, yours, his, hers, uh, their, theirs, and our, ours, forms. Gender, all parts must match in male or female forms. Subject verb agreement describes the proper match between subjects and verbs. Because subjects and verbs are either singular or plural, the subject of a sentence and the verb of a sentence must agree with each other in number. That is, a singular subject belongs with a singular verb and a plural subject belongs with a plural verb. Singular, the cat jumps over the fence. Plural, the cats jump over the fence. Regular verbs follow a predictable pattern. For example, in the third person singular, regular verbs always end in s. Other forms of regular verbs do not end in s. Study the following regular verb forms in the present tense. I live, you live, he or she lives, we live, you live, they live. So add an s to the third singular form of regular verbs that end in sh, x, ch, and s. I wish, he wishes. I fix, she fixes, I watch, it watches, I kiss, he kisses. Singular, subject, I read, plural, we read. In these sentences, the verb form stays the same for the first person singular and the first person plural. You stretch, you stretch. So if you use you, um, the verb stays the same. In these sentences, the verb stays the same for the second person uh, singular and the second person plural. In the singular form, the pronoun you refers to one person. In the so when you use you, it's the same if it's singular or plural. So if it's you refers to a bunch of people, the verb is still the same. Um, and if it refers to a lot of people, the verb is the same. So my mother walks to work every day. My friends like the same music I do. And so here you have singular, you know, my friends. In this su sentence, the subject is mother because the sentence only refers to one mother. So the subject is singular. So my mother walks to work every day. And so my mother is a singular subject. So it takes a singular verb, walks. And then here, my friends, you have, you have a plural uh, subject, then it takes a plural verb, like. So singular subject takes singular verb, plural subjects take a plural verb. And so uh, many singular subjects can be made plural by adding an S. Most regular verbs in the present tense end with an S in the third person singular. This does not make the verbs plural. So um, when you have a regular verb in third person case, like he lives, she lives, 
That doesn't mean that he lives and she lives is plural. It just simply means that it's singular. So that really confuses people. So you really need to learn your uh, regular verb, uh, your re regular verb conjugation. I live, you live, he or she lives. You see, this is what they mean by third person singular. He or she lives. So that's pretty easy to remember is that he or she lives. That's the only one that has the S. All of the other conjugations in um, a regular verb have no S. So that's easy to remember. All you have to remember is that uh, he or she and then has an S. And that's really confusing. It's singular with an S. So that is one of the weird, you know, I brush my teeth every day. So here, brush is the singular form. So singular subject, I take singular verb, brush. You wear the same shoes every day because only he and she takes the S. So remember, we always go back to this. Only he and she takes an S. All of the other verbs don't have an S. So that's easy to remember the conjugation. And then you have to look at all of these subjects and ask yourself, is it a singular subject or is it a plural subject? If it's a singular subject, it takes a singular verb. If it's a plural subject, it takes a plural verb. That's it. But irregular verbs are something else. Not all verbs follow a predictable pattern. These verbs are called irregular verbs. Some of the most common irregular verbs are be, have, and do. Learn the forms of these verbs in the present tense to avoid errors in subject verb agreement. And so here, be, I am, you are, he is, she is, we are, you are, they are, I have, you have, he or she has, we have. In other words, everything is have except he or she. Okay, so that's easy to remember to have. So you gotta memorize the conjugation for of, be, have, and do, because these are irregular verbs. And then here you get to practice irregular verbs. And here you have uh, errors in subject verb agreement may also occur when a sentence contains a compound subject. The subject of the sentence is separate from the verb. The subject of the sentence is an indefinite pronoun, such as anyone, everyone, and that's always singular. So anyone, everyone is, takes a singular verb. The subject of the sentence is a collective noun, such as a team or organization. The subject appears after the verb. Recognizing sources of common errors in subject verb agreement will help you avoid these errors in your writing. This section covers the subject verb agreement errors in more detail. And so here, if they ask you on the test, um, are, do all verbs follow a predictable pattern? Okay, on your quiz, then the answer is no, not all verbs do not all follow a predictable pattern. Now, that's why you have irregular verbs, because irregular verbs do not follow the predictable pattern of regular of the regular verbs. Okay, this is called a regular verb when it follows this pattern of conjugation. But you notice that the, it varies widely. Okay, there's no no more a third person case s anymore. So these verbs are all irregular, which means that verbs do not follow a predictable pattern. So you got to remember that for the quiz. A compound subject, which is a plural, which is, takes a plural verb, is formed by two or more nouns and the coordinating conjunction and or, or nor. A compound subject can be made of singular subjects, plural subjects, or a combination of uh, singular and plural subjects. Compound subjects combined with and take a plural verb form. Two singular subjects, uh, Alicia and Miguel, and therefore this is a plural subject and it takes a plural verb. The girls and the boys, this is a plural subject, takes a plural verb. Um, and here you have, uh, you have a plural subject and you, you take a plural verb. Two singular subjects, and then everything changes if you have neither, nor, or either, or. 
Oh, that's down here. So two singular subjects, neither Elizabeth nor Bianca wants to eat at the, you know, at that restaurant. So here you have two singular, as soon as you have neither nor, then these are two singular subjects, takes a singular verb. Two plural subjects, neither the kids nor the adults want to eat at the restaurant. So plural subject takes plural verb. Singular and plural. Oh yeah, that's where it gets very interesting. So neither Elizabeth or the kids want. So we don't look at, we forget about Elizabeth. And we, when you have neither nor, okay, you have to look at the second subject. Your verb agrees with the noun that's next to it, okay? And so in this case, the noun that's next to it is kids. Kids is a plural subject. Therefore, it takes a plural verb. Neither the kids nor Elizabeth wants. So Elizabeth is a singular subject, so it takes a singular verb. So always when you have neither or nor, it's the second subject that the verb agrees with, not the first subject. So that, that, that's, that goes with, that's one of the strange you know, quirks of subject verb agreement. And either or works the same way as neither nor, okay? It's the same, same phenomenon. So here you have two singular subjects, takes a singular verb. Two plural subjects, takes a plural verb. Then if you have a singular and plural, here you have twins. That's a plural subject. It takes the plural verb take. And then if you have, you have the, so whatever is in front of the verb, that's what it gets agreed to. So Jason is a singular subject. It takes the singular subject takes, and that's it. So this is the hardest part about um, subject verb agreement. And if you can understand this part of subject verb agreement, You've got it. So let's continue. As you read or write, you may come across a sentence that contains a phrase or clause that separates the subject from the verb. Often prepositional phrases or dependent clauses add more information to the sentence and appear between the subject and the verb. However, the subject and the verb must still agree. If you have trouble finding the subject and the verb, Cross out or ignore the phrases and clauses that begin with prepositions or dependent words. The subject of a sentence will never be in a prepositional phrase or dependent clause. Okay, if I'm a quiz, will the subject of a sentence ever be in a prepositional phrase or dependent clause? And the answer is no. If I say true or false, the subject of a sentence will always be in the prepositional phrase or a dependent clause. Okay, so if I take out this never, okay, that becomes a false. So you gotta learn the wording here because that's on your quiz. The following is an example of a subject and verb separated by a prepositional phrase. The students with the best grades, with the best grades, that's a prepositional phrase that modifies students. Okay, because that's what prepositional phrases do. It modifies the noun uh, that, that, it, that it goes with. And so you gotta get rid of the modifier. And here you have the subject, students, takes the plural verb, when. The puppy, under the bridge. So here you have a singular subject, puppy, and then you've got the singular verb, is. The cat that I bought has power steer, the car, okay, the car that I bought has power steering. And so here, that I bought, we take that out because that is a dependent clause. So we forget about that. And the subject is car and then has. And the subject of the sentence is never the, it, the dependent clause. So this I over here is not the subject. The representatives who are courteous sell the most tickets. We get rid of who are courteous. Who cares about that? And so the representatives subject, uh, plural verb, a plural subject takes a plural verb sell. Indefinite pronouns all tend to be sing all take a singular verb, okay, for the most part, except for all, any, none, and some. But all of the other indefinite pronouns all take a singular verb except for all, any, none, and some. And so and also both. That also takes a plural verb. 
So indefinite pronouns refer to an unspecified person, thing, or number. Memorize that definition. When an indefinite pronoun serves as the subject of a sentence, you will often see, you will often use a singular verb form. However, keep in mind that exceptions arise. Some indefinite pronouns, like all, any, none, and some, may require a plural verb form to de determine whether or not to use use a singular or plural verb with an indefinite pronoun, consider the noun that the pronoun would refer to. If the noun is plural, then use a plural verb with the indefinite pronoun. View the chart to see a list of common indefinite pronouns. Everybody in the kitchen, so everybody, all of these verbs, all of these indefinite pronouns, always take a singular verb. And then all of these indefinite pronouns all take a sing all take a plural verb so let me say that again all of these take singular verb and all of these take plural verb the indefinite pronoun all takes a plural verb so all the cake the indefinite pronoun all takes a plural verb form because all refers to the plural noun people and because people is plural, all is plural. So singular, all the cake is on the door, is on the floor. Collective noun. A collective noun is a noun that identifies more than one person, place, or thing, and considers those places or things as one singular unit. Because collective nouns are counted as one, they are singular and require a singular verb. Some commonly used collective nouns uh, are group, team, army, flock, uh, family, class. So all of these collective, uh, collective nouns all take a singular verb, even though they look plural, but because the, they are used as one unit, okay, then they are singular. So the class, singular, is going on a trip because you're talking about one whole class. In this sentence, class is a collective noun. Although the class consists of many students, the class is treated as a singular unit and requires a singular verb form. The subject follows the verb. You may encounter sentences in which the subject comes after the verb instead of before the verb. In other words, the subject of the sentence may not appear where you expect it to appear. To ensure proper subject verb agreement, you must identify the subject. So when you have the word here and there, here is my wallet. Wallet is the subject of the sentence, and therefore wallet, singular subject wallet, agrees with singular verb is. There are 30 dolphins in the water. Dolphins, plural subject dolphins, then agrees with the plural verb are. If you have trouble identifying the subject and the verb in sentences that start with here or there, it may help to reverse the order of the sentence as the subject comes first. My wallet is here. 30 dolphins are in the water. Then it becomes clear what is the subject and what is not the subject. So when you have here and there, just switch the sentences around and you'll be able to find the subject. When you ask questions, a question word, who, what, where, when, why, or how appears first. The verb, then the subject, follow. Who are the people you are related to? When am I going to go to the grocery store? If you have trouble finding the subject and the verb in questions, try answering the question being asked. When am I going to the grocery store? I am going to the grocery store tonight. And if I had students here, I would actually practice this with them. Okay, so here you have an advertisement and you have more writing. Uh, key takeaways. Parts of sentences must agree in number, person, case, and gender. A verb must always agree with its subject in number. A singular subject requires a singular verb a plural subject requires a plural verb. Irregular verbs 
do not follow a predictable pattern in their singular and plural forms. Common, irregular ver uh, verbs are to be, to have, and to do. A common, I mean, a compound subject is formed when two or more nouns are joined by and, or, nor. In some sentences, the subject and verb may be separated by a phrase or clause, but the verb must still agree with the subject. Indefinite pronouns such as anyone, each, everyone, many, no one, and something refer to unspecified people or objects, and so most indefinite pronouns are singular. A collective noun is a noun that identifies more than one person, place, or thing, and treats those people, places, or things as singular, as one singular unit. And so collective nouns require singular verbs. In sentences that begin with here and there, the subject follows the verb. In questions, the subject follows the verb. So here ends my video on subject verb agreement. So if you have any questions about subject verb agreement, feel free to email me at, at any time. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Professor H Writing Channel.